Well, this is the third attempt on turning a 30 inch piece of a hollow uh, aromatic cedar. The previous two have had catastrophic failures. <clears throat> this time I've I've turned it down. I've used this trick before. I turned it down and and um, I put electrical tape here really, really tight, several wraps to try to keep that from expanding as this uh, live center goes in there and holds it centered. Um, on this end, I've made a, um, basically a jam chuck. This is for one inch, it's on seven eighths. There's also a notch for three quarters. <clears throat> And uh, it basically just fits inside the the bore, and um, the blank slides up on it and uh, jams up against the next size there. Um, of course, it's got some slip to it. Um, I've turned others without even taping them and didn't have much problem. Uh, but this um, this aromatic cedar has given me a little bit of a challenge. I've turned a couple of these before and didn't have a whole lot of problems. So I don't know if it's this particular piece, if it's got more faults, more cracks, checks and stuff in it. I've tried to cut all that back and look for any of it. Looks to be pretty sound wood, but the other two look pretty decent too. And um, they both failed right here. So I'm gonna see if I can turn this down and get a flute blank out of it without um, having another catastrophic failure. So we'll see how this works. Um, I would like to have a different chucking system here, but part of the problem with having your bore already drilled in there, not actually drilled, this is two pieces joined together, although my glue joint is not what failed. Um, on the other two, it, it split in other places. But um, anyway, um, having that bore already in there, uh, to be perfectly lined up, this is the only way I know to do it, to uh, be perfectly centered with your hole so that you don't, uh, you don't come out with a, you know odd shape uh, on your ends and have a, a thin place on your wall and a, you know, a thick side and um, this this turns out consistently uh, you know centered blanks and I turn them down to uh, right at eighth of an inch uh, I sand it the last little bit but anyway I'm gonna see what happens um, I also need I've got to build me a steady rest to be able to put in the center um, of these I get by with it because I'm really really careful on the others and uh, I can actually use my tool as I'm um, as I'm turning these, if I let kind of the heel of that uh, rub up against the flute once it's down, um, you know, down to the round wood. Um, also, if I had a big round over, I could knock these corners off, make it a little bit faster, not quite so um, rough. But anyway, once I once I get down to uh, the round wood. I can let it ride on the heel and, um, and take a lot of the vibration and bounce out of it and uh, get a nice clean turn. It just takes a little bit more technique and a lot more caution where if, um, if I had a steady rest that I could, you know, get this part turned down to where I wanted it, put the steady rest in there and, um, and then turn the rest of it, it would, uh, it would make it a lot easier and, uh, probably have fewer fewer failures also but that's a project for another day um, it's uh, Thanksgiving afternoon and I'm out in the shop it's probably 40 something in here but no wind no rain on me so it's a good place to be but we'll see how this turns out um, just a little bit more information <clears throat> I check my progress frequently with uh, set of calipers 
Um, at just at an inch and a quarter, I'm going to an inch and an eighth. So I think I can get this thing turned down to about that inch and a quarter, take a little bit more off all the way down it, um, and then I can sand it uh, to take me the rest of the way on down to, uh, I usually quit before, um, before I get to the inch and an eighth. It's usually slightly, slightly larger than that, but only a couple of hundreds. So it's, it's, you know, very, very little, but I try to leave myself a little bit. I don't want to get thinner than that. And, um, also on, um, this tool, some people may say, you know, well, you should be using a, um, they may say you should be using a uh, uh, spindle gouge. And um, <clears throat> this is actually a tool that I made. Um, I know the lighting's not very good. It's coming from the back side there. The light behind me is not very bright. <clears throat> um, but these little cutter tools, that's actually a cutter off of uh, or not off of, but that would replace the cutters on a spiral um, cutter head like for a, a planer or a joiner. They have several of these cutter blades mounted onto the cutter head. Anyway, for this application, i found that this right here is the most efficient tool that I've got. Um, I just, I don't, I've got a uh, spindle gouge but I don't like it for this. This does much better. It stays sharp. It's a uh, carbide tip. If it gets dull, I can rotate it all four sides are sharp. So um, it's just, it's turned out to be a really good tool for, uh, for taking these uh, flute blanks down to uh, a uniform size. It's flat, that, that's another um, positive on it. That one's candid just a little bit. Um, not perfectly straight, but uh, it's all in how you hold it up there anyway. But um, being sharp on all four sides, I can just, you know, turn it if one side gets dull. And then if the whole thing gets dull, I've got 10 more in the drawer over there. So instead of spending time sharpening and, and fiddling with a, a uh, spindle gouge, um, this thing does the trick. It cuts on three sides. So if I'm going along here, it would be a little aggressive for that right there. But if, if you're only taking off, um, you know, maybe a 30 seconds or something like that, you can just go down the side and that thing will just peel it right off. And uh, it's actually a smoother cut than taking it off the whole width right there. Um, so anyway, this thing works really well. If you do your flutes this way and you don't have one, it's, it's worth it to... Uh, get one or make one. I just try to hold this where you can actually see it. Um, that's a piece of half inch square stock steel. It goes, it goes about uh, four or five inches down into this handle. And then this is actually a, sorry, this is actually a, a I forget what you call those. Um, those are just some that I had bought. They're really cheap. Um, you know, ordered them when I was ordering other stuff out of woodworking magazine. <clears throat> you can also use a uh, uh, copper plumbing uh, tubing coupling. And uh, they're a little bit longer than this. Actually, you know, one this size is considerably longer than that. You can... Uh, cut those in half and have two and you know, they're probably a dollar and a quarter for the thing And I've, I've got a couple of those that I've used also. So anyway Anyway, it's a very good tool For this and for a lot of other things. I, I use this on bowls and in all sorts of stuff uh, probably the most versatile tool that I've got I love my uh, bowl gouge. I've got a Carter and Sons uh, really really nice bowl gouge that I love but um, I, I pick this up more often than not and use that bowl gouge when I'm actually doing bowl sides and things like that where this isn't quite as is good but for roughing stuff out you can't beat this thing so anyway um, just a little uh, 
a little bit more information there. Well, there it is. Catastrophic failure number three. As you can see, the, the glue joint is fine. I don't know if you can see that split right there. And it runs the length of the flute. Um, anyway, that's, I think the steady rest would have pruned any of that one. The others have happened because they, they split here uh, because of the pressure from the, the um, tapered uh, live center. But this happened, it got to, uh, you, know, you get thin, you get thin um, in this area here and it starts to flex. And that's why I was saying I, I really need a live center. I mean, a, not a live center, I need a um, steady rest that goes in here and um, to uh, stabilize this part in here. But it gets to um, flexing on you as you're turning. And um, when it did, it caused a catch right here. And that catch, I think I would have got this one turned out all right if I hadn't had that catch. I think everything else was okay. So for the time being, I'm gonna be sticking to uh, cherry and walnut and maple. Um, mostly cherry and walnut. Maple's not my favorite. I prefer the softer, little softer woods, especially I really do like these um, aromatic cedars because they have a nice woody sound. Uh, I've got a couple of them that, that I have done and I've done some regular NAF out of, out of this wood and um, had really, really good results and I love it. But um, anyway, um, to do any more of these um, rim blown style where I have to do them this way, um, I'm gonna have to get, build me a steady rest. And um, until then, I'll just be using woods that are a little bit more stable. So anyway, well, just to show you that all of them haven't exploded on me. Uh, this is a, a uh, maple that I finished the other day. I finished it out in an A and uh, got it all tuned up and ready to go. It's ready for, um, for the finish. So I guess I'll be doing that instead of uh, turning out the rest of that aromatic cedar one so uh, anyway i guess this will be the rest of my project for the afternoon